how as we look at the Word of God and finish up the study of the book of John and the story of, of Jesus and what you've done and what you continue to do, uh, stir in us a, a thankfulness, stir in us uh, a response that would be appropriate for what we'll read and study. And I ask for your blessing and all that are here now, Lord. In Jesus' name. All right, if you've got a guidebook, we're on page 108. Again, we are in the, on the very last lesson of the book of John. Remember, the author of this guidebook uh, has divided the book of John into the costly way of discipleship. Uh, early on, uh, how we learned that a disciple, a follower of Jesus Christ, will deny himself, will, will have a servant's heart, will, will do all those things we looked at. Then the second unit was titled the, the, the Way of Forgiveness, and it was the last week of the life of Jesus Christ and how he, he suffered, was condemned, uh, betrayed, and so on, and, and died. Uh, uh, the king condemned, and, and then, he, of course, he rose from the, from the dead. The last unit, then, was the, 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 in fact, it's called the way of victorious living. Last week, we looked at the living in resurrection power. And remember, we looked at the power of God that resurrected Jesus Christ is uh, accessible and available to you and I. So that, that same power, when you look at that, it just kind of is just magnificent. It's glorious. The, the, you know, God raising Jesus Christ up from the dead. And that's our Lord. That's our Savior. That's the power that we have. And the Bible uh, gives us that assurance that we are kept by the power of God. Uh, we're saved by the power of God. And so to live in that power, we can have uh, victory over the, the penalty of sin. We can have uh, power over the influence of it. We don't have to. We don't have to live in it like we did, like I did when I was lost. And we can have victory, resurrection victory in that kind of power. Now, today we're looking at the title of it is called Follow with Renewed Purpose. And, and this is the context is Jesus going to the disciples after he's risen from the dead. We looked last week, remember, that he, he showed up and then Thomas wasn't there and he, he revealed himself to them. They were afraid. They were in the upper room hiding out because they thought the Jews were going to seek them, right? So they're, they're, they're afraid. Fear is not good. Fear causes you to hide out. Fear causes you to not move. And Jesus, the plan of God was for them to move and to go out and bring the gospel, right? So then a week later, Jesus shows up. Thomas is there. Thomas gives that great testimony. My Lord, my God. Okay, now he, he reveals him again, reveals himself again one more time. And, in the, and it's that context, John chapter 21. And anybody read it? Raise your hand. Okay, a couple. Okay, okay so, but, but you're familiar with, how many have ever read the Bible? Raise your hand. Good, now let's get on the roller. How many have ever read the, the book of John? Raise your hand. Okay, oh yeah, you guys know this stuff, right? So at the end, Jesus shows up to them. And it's the story where, where Peter and the guys, they're going fishing. And he shows up, and, and we're going to read what happens in that context. And, and but, but here's the point right off the bat. We are, we are going to... Follow with renewed purpose. And right off the bat, uh, this, the context of this is someone who's already a follower of Jesus and now has to be renewed. This is not about a lost person. You should be aware of this, but I want to frame this right. Okay, many of us have children that, that have, our daughters went to church with us from the womb. But they, they didn't get saved until they were teenagers. We're not talking about, we understand when you're lost and then you get saved, you have a renewed purpose. Yes, you do. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become. We're not talking about that context here. This is, this, the context here is the person is already saved, following Jesus, a disciple, like they were, and now they've kind of fallen away. Something's happening, and something can happen in our lives. In fact, you could, you could go so far to say that we regularly sometimes fall away, and we have to be encouraged every week. Okay. But this is the context where something has happened. What's happened in their life? Jesus died! <laughs> but sometimes things will happen in our lives, and it could be, a, a, I think of a flat tire. You know, sometimes it's a slow leak. And you don't realize it's happening until you hear the rim on the highway. And it happens so gradually. And we can gradually get away and away and away until we, something happens that's a clue. Like, and then, you know, I've, I've fallen away from God. But then sometimes it can be an event, a death of a loved one, other things. Something tri you, lose, you lose your job, house burns down, something. And if you're not careful, you, you, you can just react to it in such a poor way that you just 
decide I'm not following God anymore, which we know is not right, but it happens in our lives. So I thought I'd better right off the bat, we could go through it. No, 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 okay, great, great. No, no, this is someone who is saved, followed the Lord, and they've fallen away, which is very appropriate for any Christian to study because it's either happened to you already or, or you're in the middle of something like this or we could potentially have to fight it in the future. So, so let's take a look here. Uh, page 108, it's, it's uh, John chapter 21. And again, the author does a nice job. Uh, he, he, he refers to a wayward child. And then the wayward child gets into all kinds of mess. I'm thinking of my nephew, perfect example. Uh, a, a wayward child gets in, gets in all kinds of trouble. And then they finally come to the point where they have sincere repentance. And they come back to the parents, right? And, and because there was sincere repentance, uh, the first thing is to forgive and restore, right? But then the second step, he says, is you want to put them back on, on the path of right living. And, and that's what the Lord does here. So we'll maybe talk about that as a parent. There's a lot to learn as a parent on how to restore our children if something like this happens, right? Because he models this for us, okay? But, but don't miss the point. The author is saying, it's a wayward child. The person's already your child. You're already saved. You're already a child of God. You're already born again. So I don't, don't want, I want to make sure you understand this is not someone who's lost. Okay? And then they got to get saved. Questions about that? Okay, all right, let's, let's dive into it. All right, so, so if you turn to page, page 110, we're looking on... Uh, you know, verse 3, so John 21, verse 3 to 7, and, and uh, they go fishing, and let's just read it, and then we'll, then we'll discuss it. It says in verse 3 to verse 7, the Bible says, Simon Peter saith unto them, I go fishing. They say unto him, We also go with thee. They went forth and entered into a ship immediately, and that night they caught nothing. But when the morning was now come, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples knew not that it was Jesus. Then Jesus saith unto them, Children, have ye any meat? They answered him, No. And he said unto them, Cast the net on the right side of the ship, and ye shall find. And they cast therefore, and now they were not able to draw it, draw it for the multitude of fishes. Therefore that disciple whom Jesus loved saith unto Peter, It is the Lord. Okay, so, so again, I'm, I'm trying to uh, frame this the right way. Were, were, were these men followers of Jesus Christ? Yes. Okay. I, and I actually, I don't know this for sure, but it occurred to me. All the time that they were with the Lord, did they ever go fishing? Anybody? I don't think so, but I don't know for sure. So don't pull, don't say, let me look at that. Okay, I don't know. I don't know for sure. But, but here's the idea. Here's the idea. Because the context is to, to follow with renewed purpose. You had a purpose. You were following the Lord. They spent all this time with Jesus, right? And now he died, and they were hiding out, and he, re he, he reveals to them once, twice, okay? Now they decide to go fishing. I don't recall anywhere in Scripture that Jesus said, hey, you guys, you got to keep that fishing business going. <laughs> never said that. He, never did it come up. In fact, I'm, I don't think they ever went fishing. They were with the Lord as they went about doing the things that the Lord Jesus was doing, okay? Now... The, he, he passes away, but he comes back, and all that. Now they decide to go fishing. The idea is they're probably not doing what Jesus wanted them to do. I got a bunch of nodding heads for them, okay? Okay, okay, so, 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 so that's the idea that they've kind of fallen away. We understand that the Lord uh, wanted them to go ye therefore into all the world and, make, and, and preach the gospel every, and make disciples and all that. Here they're fishing. They were not doing what the Lord the purpose they had for him. Yeah. And that's what's going to happen to you and I if we fall away. The verse that, I, that came to my mind under number one on the bonus material sheet, uh, under one, uh, one H, I go right to the bottom. But, but the Bible says this, the backslider in heart shall be filled with his own ways, and a good man shall be satisfied from him himself. So how many have ever heard the term backslider? Oh, okay, good, good, good. That's a Baptist word, and sooner or later you hear about it. And, and I hear it misused all the time. Uh, here, here's how it's misused. You know, they, they knew somebody that maybe came to church, and now they're not, and they'll say, oh, he's backslidden. 
The problem may be, and almost always in my personal experience, the person was never saved. And so it's more of a case where uh, that scripture, they went out from among us because they were not of us. For had they been part of us, they would have no doubt stayed with us. So, so and, and like in my family, if the kids were coming with dad all their lives, but then as they got older, and what's revealed is they went out from among us, they were never saved in the first place. They were not backslidden. A backslider means you were serving God and doing some things for God. And, and, and your work for God was a reflection that you were saved. Passing all tracks. It could be all the other things that a lost person does while they're coming to church. But, but it, it, it was a reflection in, in what God worked in you, the fruits of the Spirit. And, and you, were, you were literally a follower of the Lord. And, 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 and there was evidence in your life. And now you've backslidden from that. You follow me? A backslider has to be somewhere for God in order to backslide. There's a difference. And so a characteristic, so again, that's why I was, I wanted to try to make sure you understand the framework of this scripture. This is about saved people. Saved people, you're a new creature, you start reading the Bible, you start doing things that Christians do, and you're all aware of those disciplines and so on, and nobody has to tell you just about because you want to do them and all that. And now, so you've, God's grown you to a certain point, and now you backslide from that. Great example here in the Apostles. They were walking and talking with God, had boldness, and did all these things that's, that's evident there in, in the gospel, what they did. But then something happened, and they decided to go fishing, which is an example of what a backslider does. What did we just read? Here's what a backslider does. The backslider in heart shall be filled with his own ways. His own ways. So, so for me, whatever I did when I was lost, I'm just trying to give an example. If I backslide, I'm going to kind of backslide into that. See, see it? Okay, nodding heads all over. Got it, got it. They were, what did they do before they met Jesus? They were fishermen. That was their profession, but it was a hobby. They enjoyed doing that. So instead of doing what God wants them to do, they, they were backsliding in heart to it because they were doing what they wanted to do in the flesh. That's what they loved to do, fish. That's what they went doing. You see that? Raise your hand if you understand that. Okay, okay. Because, uh, yes, question? Did you say Jonah was a backslider? Uh, yeah. Because the Lord sent him to do something, yeah. and he did Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, a backslider. Uh, well, he was. Yeah, yeah, I think to some degree, uh, without spending ten minutes on the subject, yeah, that's an example where God had a purpose for him. Okay, and he ran the other way, and so, so then he, he God gave him a new hairdo and everything else, and, and his purpose was renewed, and he, he was back on the trail. So was he a follower of Jesus? Yes. Was he saved? Was he born again? Did God call him to be a prophet? Yes, yes, yes. Well, okay, did he backslide from that? Yeah. How'd that work out for you, Jonah? <laughs> he re re renewed his life. Same kind of idea there. Yes, yes. Although, uh, you got to be careful to not take one individual situation and just apply it to every other individual. It's going to look and feel a little bit different depending on who the person is kind of thing. But, but, but here's the idea. Uh, these men followed Jesus Christ. And then they kind of stepped away. And boy, Jiminy Cricket, Jesus was all over that thing because, because of the mission and the purpose of Almighty God. Okay, got it, got it. But that, that's going to happen in our life. So, so let's distinguish him a little bit because I see all these intent looks and puzzles. You're scaring me. Okay, so, so, so for example, you got a person that never really accomplished anything for God, had no victory over sin, for example, had no spiritual fruit and so on, and then now they stop coming to church. Okay, because I, I've had enough of that. Okay, and now maybe three, four, five years go by, and nothing happens in the person's life. God didn't deal with them. God didn't convict him or her. God didn't spank, you know, like a father does. There's only, I mean, there's a real strong conclusion there that this person was never saved. Because if you're saved and a follower of Jesus, God is a loving father, and when he sees his kids backsliding, he is not going to let you get away with it. And you're going to be convicted, and it'll just get, it'll just get, uh, God will take it to whatever level that he'll have to take it to bring you back. Because he loves you so much. He loves you so much, he's not going to let you stay in that back, backslidden state. So, so if you're one of his sheep that wandered away and you're stuck, you know, in the muck of this world, he'll break your stinking <coughs> leg to get you back in the pot. So, so you, cannot, you and I can respond at the first conviction. You and I are in church, Pastor Jim preaches, and we break out in a sweat, and I hope you're that sensitive to this Holy Spirit. And you, oh, I'm sorry. 
So, so and, you, and you respond to God and you get right with God? It, it, that would be wonderful. And that could go on every Sunday in your life. Glory to God, that's what Christianity looks like. Okay? Or you or you turn your you, you, you get a little hard hearted and you don't, you don't, you don't, you don't, and God will pursue you and he'll pursue you and he'll pursue you. And hey, it'll get worse and worse and worse. Why? Because he's mean? No, because he loves you so much. The purpose of godly discipline is always repentance and restoration and bringing you back to that loving relationship with him. Questions? In the South, there's many flavors of Baptist, and there is every corner, there's yep. different kinds of Baptist, and this is one of the issues that separates those. Um, my parents, they feel, in a sense, they feel like if you fell from God, you were never a child of God. Okay, you were never saved. If you fell away, you were never saved. I feel you can backslide, but yet, God, we are still his sheep, and he will still convict me at some point. But there is a scripture, they always, you know, talk about this scripture about that um, God will quit working with us. He, he, you know, God promises that he will call on our heart once, but there comes a point he will quit working with us. And then it's, it's just, I feel like God will if I stray. He loves me, and I pray that he would convict me if I did so, but I feel you can get so far out there. Possibly. But you don't feel it. it. It's a, it says, if, 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 if we, here's my hope is, to at least, at least introduce the subject. And if, if you can, and this is something that you can learn more and more about and experience it more and more in your life and in the lives of those you love, and you can discern, you know, there was never any fruit in the first place ever, right. okay? And then you can make a conclusion because why? Is it your own personal opinion? No. You're taking the scripture and letting the light of the scripture shine on this person's life. And the Bible says there are certain things that happen when you get saved. You love the word of God. You love God's people. And, and all the different scriptural. And you, you'll see evidence that there was a salvation experience. Because you look at a tree and there's a bunch of apples in there. Oh, I, I, it's an apple tree. So, so if there was no fruit at all. And then they, and you look at other aspects of it. Like gee, they, they so, uh, supposedly fell away for 17 years. And they never, God never spanked them. There was never discipline ever. You, you add all these things together, and the conclusion you're trying to, to discern, not judge. Only God's going to judge. But if we're trying to discern, and why would we discern? Because we're trying to discern how to pray and how to restore the person. So I maybe after after some discernment and prayer and according to the scripture, okay, I need to pray for that person's salvation. As opposed to we saw fruit and we saw, boy, they, they, they were, uh, and you, i got to be careful what I say because... Uh, I don't want to say anything wrong, but but let's say they went soul winning. They sang choir. They love, you know, they love the church. They love, you know, you can see fruits in the person's life, and then something happened. You know, it could be a a, 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 a powerful sinful event, or it could be a gradual falling away, where they love the world more than the Lord. You know, and then so there takes some discernment. I, I would be trying to be very careful not to say black and white. Well, be careful. I would say be praying and let the Holy Spirit of God, because uh, I'm assuming whoever we're talking about or thinking about is someone you love dearly. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> That's why we're here. Yes. I mean, I, one scripture, this is the saddest scripture that I've ever read. It's under 1A. But, and, and I thought, well, I don't know if these people are going to be half awake or if they have enough coffee. But this is a very serious subject. This is a very serious subject. Because, for example, under 1A, uh, the Bible says this is, this is uh, Paul, the Apostle Paul. Did he accomplish anything? Did God through him? Yes, yes, yes. Look what he writes. It says, but I keep under my body. Why? And bring it into subjection. Why? Lest... That by any means, when I have preached unto others, I myself should be a castaway. And a castaway is very serious. It's, it's in, the, in that realm of being cast away by God. He, he's just done with you kind of thing. So Now, are you saved? Yes. Are you going to heaven? Yes. But when you get up there, you're going to be standing. Uh, this is Mickey J talking. You're standing up there. You're in heaven, but you're walking around in your bloomers because you, no, you have no rewards. Because... <laughs> Okay, good. I made you laugh. All right. So, so, so the the idea the idea that this is a very serious subject. 
You know, and, and I, do, have I been referred to as maybe a preacher? So I, I read that, lest I myself, having preached unto others, be, I myself be a castaway. Oh, God forbid, that's the saddest thought that I can have this morning. All right, so it's serious. All right, uh, again, we talked about the context of a wayward child, not a lost person, and the idea that evidences, now this is a review, because we've been kind of spiderwebbing all over, and you ladies are right on this, but I'm losing it. So, 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 but, but the context of a Christian being backslidden, okay, and versus a lost person, and some of the things that we're going to see that are evident in someone who is a Christian, the Spirit of God's going to bring conviction. And you, you, some of you have felt that. If, you, if you're feeling conviction, that's evidence that you're saved. Where, where, where others, maybe your children, grandchildren, if there's no, and you're trying to discern, you could go up and say, have you felt convicted? You know, they won't even know, where, but, but you're looking for that. Is there any conviction in their life? No. Well, that's what the Holy Spirit does. Secondly, uh, there could be godly discipline. And many of you are aware, aware of that verse. I threw it in there under one C. As many as the Lord loveth, he chasteneth. That's a, a loving, spanking, godly discipline with the purpose of bringing repentance and restoration with God. So again, the idea that someone's away from God for, for six, seven, eight, nine years and there's been no godly discipline, then somebody's lying. Either God's lying or they're deceived. And many times that's been the case. Okay. So, so, so in a Christian that's fallen away, God's going to seek you like Jesus did. Man, he, he showed up again for the express purpose of restoring these guys. And bringing this up to life. Why? Because you love them so much. And you wanted to restore them. Bring repentance, conviction, and restoration. And get them back on the purpose. That's what this is about. That's what we're seeing. So, so I don't know about you, but I'm reading this. I've read this before, but now I'm kind of seeing it in a, in a fresh perspective. This is an example of what is going to go on in our lives. You know, not just theirs. Okay. So I mean, let, let's, now that we're on the topic, let's, let's, let's cover this. Many of you have heard this before. And this is the idea. You, you ought to be wise enough to distinguish... When the devil's giving you a hard time versus the Holy Spirit. And Pastor Jim taught me this. I'm too dumb to know this. Pastor taught me this. And this is how it looks. You should, you should be able to discern when the devil is, is at you, it's going to be a general condemnation. Oh, you're no good. Oh, you could never be a good mom. You could never be a good dad. You failed your children. You could never do this in church. It's a general con. That's the devil. And you feel that? That sucks. That feels horrible. But, but stop, wait a minute, that's not the Holy Spirit, that's the devil. And then if you have to, I think it's Romans 8 verse 1, the Bible says, now there, there is now therefore no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. So you back the devil off in Jesus' name and then and read verses how Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you. Okay. And, and, and that's, remember how the Lord was tempted by the devil? Remember? And what did Jesus say? It is written, it is written. So if you feel that general condemnation, it's not the Holy Spirit. It's of the devil, right? And so how are you going to uh, fight the devil? You're going to use scripture like Jesus said. So go memorize a couple of them that are good to back the devil off and say, Jesus loves me. Get, the, get away from you, you snake. Okay? So that's the devil. General condemnation. The Holy Spirit <clears throat> is very specific. I mean, I, I, I've sensed this in my own life where I'm convicted about a specific lie I just told 15 minutes ago. Oh, it, it, it's horrible. It's very uncomfortable, but it's very specific. He's got, he's got a 30 on 6, okay? It's a brownie. 30 on 6. It was a scope. And it's, one, it's like Redfield or whatever. It, he, is, he was very specific. And you know you're wrong, and, you, and he convicts you of something specific, and, and it, it brings repentance. You come to God, confess it. You're sorry, ask for forgiveness, be ready for forgiveness. And, and what does the Bible say? If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And you're so thankful for the blood of Jesus. And you get back up, restored, ready, get back in the fight. And you should do that regularly. I mean, I'm, I'm talking maybe once a day, a couple times a week. You know, maybe it's just me. <laughs> but you, that, that should be a discipline like Bible study and prayer. Okay. All right, so we kind of covered, we beat the beat the daylights out of that topic, topic, but there's a lot of good stuff in there, okay? Let's move on, let's move on. So, so we talked about uh, the context of this. Now let's re re read the next section where Jesus says in verse 15 to 17. So John 21, verse 15 to 17, and the Lord is saying, do you, do you love me? So let's take a look. Page 112, page 112. The Bible says in verse 15, 
So when they had dined, okay, in between here, I just had to throw this out. Remember, they, they catch all the fish, 153, they come to shore. Jesus has a fire going. Jesus has some bread there, and he says, hey, bring some of the fish. And Jesus, Jesus wines and dines them. And I, did, did any of you, does that occur to you? Does that sound familiar? Remember how he washed their feet? Here he rose from the dead, and he, he gets some fish, and he, he serves some breakfast. Again, modeling the servant savior that he is. You don't want to miss that. So he's loving them. And uh, he's making breakfast for them. I mean, he's God. Shouldn't they be making breakfast for him? I think so. Okay, but he's doing that for them. And he's loving them first. That's why they love him. You see that? Read it. I just noticed he had the fish and bread already. Yeah. Where'd he get it from? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know. Yeah, yeah. I'll give you a couple of fillets here. <laughs> a little I bit of butter. I never noticed that before. Yeah. I was thinking he used the fish that they caught. But I mean, it's both cool, yeah. but I think the message is... Isn't that cool how he was serving them still? And that's our Lord. That's our Savior. So he was, he was uh, practicing what he preached kind of thing. And he does that for us. He'll, he'll love us and be such. Uh, if we, God help us to recognize those acts of kindness, those little things in life that we would just stop. I know Joy is so good at doing that. And she'll just pause and thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And see that. So that's kind of why I brought that out. All right. So verse 15, the Bible says, so when they had dined, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonah, lovest thou me more than these? He saith unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, Feed my lambs. He saith to him again the second time, Simon, son of Jonah, lovest thou me? He saith unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, Feed my sheep. He saith unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonah, lovest thou me? Peter was grieved because he said unto him the third time, lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things. Thou knowest that I love thee. Jesus, Jesus saith unto him, feed my sheep. So a couple of things there. And again, as you study this, if you, if you read this, you know, bring some things to light that you see there. But uh, I, I've heard preachers say this. How many times did Peter deny the Lord? Okay, I had to say this because everyone's thinking this. So how many times, how many times did Jesus challenge Peter? Three. So that, that there could be some validity to that. Okay. Um, here's another thing. In verse 15, remember now, especially in the context of following the Lord with renewed purpose in what we just discussed. Okay. Look in verse 15. So when they had dined, Jesus saith unto Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonah, lovest thou me more than these? Did you catch that? I don't know if I've ever noticed that. But the Lord is saying to the Christian, Simon Peter, Lovest thou me more than these? Here's my point. Do you and I, you and I have to ask ourselves, is there someone or something that we might love more than him? What is potentially, I hope there's not, but maybe in our lives there's something that the Lord would say to you and me. Lovest thou me more than these? You know, and I, I saw this picture they threw in the packet, you know, we love our wives, we love our children, we love our families, all that kind of stuff. We love what we do, we love the church, and so on. But any of that stuff, if you love anyone or anything more than the Lord, it's not right. And I just found that interesting that God himself would say to a Christian, I bet you he said it to me, I bet you he's going to say it to you or has already. He wants us to love him. How? What are those verses that are coming to your mind? Love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy strength, and so on. Where the Lord really wants us to love him, and he proved how much he wants us to by dying for us. And all, all the daily benefits. He's our provider. He's our priest. He's our prophet. He's our protector. All these wonderful things. Okay. And should we love him? Yes. But is would he say to me, for example, lovest thou me more than these? Do I love you, Lord, more than my children? The answer should be yes. And so, so how is that going to play out in our lives? Or do I love the Lord more than my wife? Yes, Lord. So when it comes down to choosing right and, and wrong, and I know what the Lord says, but my wife has a different opinion. Honey, I love you, but here's where i got to lead us. We are going to follow the Lord. Uh, my, one of my children, one of my daughters doing something that I know scripturally is not right. Now, I love you, I love you, but when it comes down to how I'm going to lead and the decisions I'm ultimately going to make, uh, here's what I'm going to do, here's why. Because you don't understand what the Lord's done for me. 
You don't, know, you don't understand fully because you weren't here half the time. You weren't born yet. But because of all that and all the Lord's done in my life, I love him. And he says this, and I want to do it because I love him. So I'm going to do it. Now, that might rub you the wrong way, and I'm so sorry. But that's, that's the kind of man your daddy is. See, it's, it's going to be like that. Now, you don't have to, you know, you know, you don't have to make, create a World War III over the thing. But you can purpose in your heart that I'm going to find out what God says. And I'm going to do it. Because I love him. And no one on planet Earth will ever love me more than him. Okay? And you decide to do that that way. And you can tell those that you love, here's what daddy's doing. Here's what, here's what mommy's doing. Okay? So that they know. So that they're not in the dark. Why, why didn't you do this? What I wanted. Here's why. Because as far as I can tell scripture, unless you can convince me otherwise, the scripture says this. It is clear what the Lord wants me to do. You see how that's going to unfold in your lives? You don't have to make those decisions about it. Okay? Jim? Uh, not that fishing was bad for them to do. Thank you. Uh, however, they, when they were fishing because they thought, well, there's nothing, we're, we're, we got to go back to what we're doing because, you know, you know, you know we're, we're, we're swimming away. But when when they did what Jesus told them to do, put their nets on the other side of the boat, then they caught the fish. So as long as they've got will, it doesn't have to be, yeah. in their case, you know, they just needed to follow Jesus. They didn't have to us as well. If we can do that at our job, then where we're at, we don't have to go off. off Such the, a good word. Does anyone, does everyone understand what he's talking about there? Mm -hmm. uh, some of the things we do in, in and of themselves is not wrong, it's not sinful, but it's wrong if, if they keep us from fulfilling God's purpose for us that, that week. Or, or, and, uh, so. and fishing could be kind of an example of a hobby or something we enjoy to do that we should be in our Bible instead of yeah, exactly. So I think you all have that discernment, that wisdom. Nothing wrong with fishing at all. In fact, you know, when I go, I'm passing out tracks, and you can witness and so on, the fellowship of it and so on. Uh, but, 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 but in their particular case, uh, Jesus said, follow me, and I will make you to become fishers of men. So in their case, it could have been an example where there was a, a, a little stepping away from God's purpose in their life, and they went back to all they knew and all they really loved, and that was fishing. Kind of like me, I, I, I purposed in my heart, I like playing games on my tablet a lot, purposed in my heart, I'm going to read first the Bible on there you before know. I do anything else, and put that first. Well done, well done. I know in my own life, I'll give you an honest testimony, I, I, uh, God's convicted me about seeing my uh, my uh, relatives, cousins, aunts, and uncles, any of you know out in Door County, I was going with Kiwani, and in my life's been filled with a lot of good things, even serving within the church, but I feel like if I stand before God, He's not going to be happy because I didn't get after those people that he wanted me to. So I can fill my life with choir practice and all these other things, but in my heart of hearts, I know with the Lord, he wants me to go see my aunt. He wants me to go see my uncle. He wants me to go see my, my cousins over there because they're going to die and go to hell. So that, that's a priority. That's what the Lord wants me to do. And with his help, I'm going to do that. So there, there's an example that I can share with you from my own life. All right, and lastly, so we, we talked about... Uh, we, and, and we saw Jesus' humanity there again. Uh, what do I mean? He got hungry. When he got hungry, he had to have food. He had to eat. He ate with the guys. So we see he's in his humanity. We saw that. Uh, we talked about the these in, in our life. And, and here, here was another thought I had. And I, I got to ask you ladies. How do you, feel about, how do you feel about this when your husband says, honey, you know that I love you? How does that sound? Smack. Yeah. What? Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, thank you. So, so here's the point. I had a feeling, and I didn't get a chance to ask you, Kath, but I had a feeling if I say to her, honey, you know that I love you. <laughs> I've never said that. Uh, I think it would be better for me to just say, honey, I love you. Here's my point. Have, when's the last time you told the Lord that you love him? You know, I, 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 put, I put in my, my search, I love you, Lord. It doesn't show up in the Bible. What does show up, I, I found one under Psalm 116. It says, I love the Lord because he hath heard my voice. So I, I think it, if you love the Lord, why not Why not tell him once in a while that, that, that I love you, Lord? You know? and, then, and then you hit right on it, though. Well, let's show him that we love him, right? And, and the Bible says, Jesus said, if a man love me, he will keep my words. So we can, we can show our love for him. But, but it's more than just doing the right thing. It's doing the right thing with the right motive out of love. A man love me, he will keep my words. 
So, so it's kind of, I just talked through that scenario where, where you decide what the Lord says. Is, well, I love the Lord. I'm going to do it, Lord, because you said so. I don't see how it's going to work out. I know that with some of the other people in my life, it might be a problem, but I'm going to do it anyway because I love you, Lord. So that would be a good example of how to live. Okay. And then lastly, let's read the last couple of verses, then we're done. It says on verse 20 to 23, the Bible says, uh, Then Peter, turning about, seeth the disciple whom Jesus loved following, which also leaned on his breast at supper and said, Lord, which is he that betrayeth thee? That's a reference to John, of course. Verse 21, Peter seeth him, that's John, saith to Jesus, Lord, and what shall this man do? Jesus saith unto him, If I will that he tarry till I come, what is that to thee? Follow thou me. Then went this saying abroad among the brethren that that disciple should not die. Yet Jesus said not unto him, he shall not die. But if, if, if I will that he tarry till I come, what is that to thee? So, so the idea, what about others? Well, well, I think what the Lord is saying, you can look at others. Remember Jesus was telling them, feed my sheep, feed my lambs. Okay, that's his purpose was to make disciples and so on. So he looks at, at John and says, hey, and what, what are you going to have him do? And Jesus is saying, hey, whatever I will for his life, you know, that's between me and him. Jesus is sovereign over, over your brothers and sisters in the faith. Let God reveal his will to them. You and I, our purpose is to what? Follow the Lord. Uh, so if somebody gets called to go to Slovenia, uh, you know, then praise God for it. Or if somebody's called to preach or teach, uh, great, great, just do whatever God has for you to do. Uh, don't worry about everybody else. Okay? That's what he was saying, following the Lord. And so, so there's a lot of references in there uh, about following the Lord. That's what a disciple is. Uh, follow me and I'll make you to become fishers of men. If any man come after me, let him deny himself, pick up his cross, and what? Follow me. So, so Jesus saying, you want to be a disciple? Follow me. Devoted, uh, following of the Lord Jesus. Okay. And oh, by the way, I, I, the author didn't mention this, but did, did, did you catch that? In verse 22, Jesus saith unto him, If I will that he tarry till I come, what is that to thee? Uh, that very likely, remember that's John. So, so John could tarry till Jesus come because John got caught up to the third heaven there, Revelation. He did tarry until Jesus come. John did see Jesus come. John did, if you look, if you know Revelation, the first three chapters, John's past is our present. John's present is our future. And then the last part of Revelation is everybody's future. And so when Jesus said, if I will that he tarry till I come, that's exactly what he's talking about. He did tarry because John saw Jesus come. I thought I'd just throw that out there for you. Smile. Okay, let's close in a word of prayer, shall we? Father, we thank you so much for the word of God and the, the, the wonder and the beauty and, and the truth of it all, Lord. Now I pray you'd use it like you always do to, to build us up in the faith, give us a hope and a courage to, to love you no matter what. And to overcome all that the devil in the world, the flesh might throw in our path. And always through the love of God, the, the power of the Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus, overcome and love you to the end. I pray this for all of us now, and I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.